I spent over thousand and two hundred, thousand three hundred dollars worth of Pokemon cards in just a span of two months. YouTube with me now. Yeah, ho, how's it going everyone? It says I am Otaku. How have you guys been? As you guys can click on the video on the thumbnail, you guys already know it. No, it's not Nandroids. No, it's not statues. No, it's not figures. I am truly sorry, guys. It is coming. Um, it's just painfully slow. I would simply think it's because of the pandemic situation. It's the delays made by Good Smile. Um, plenty of excuses. But nonetheless, I'm still living the life as an otaku, as this I am otaku channel is to be. And with that said, let's get straight to the topic topic being Pokemon cards. That's right, I jumped on the trend of Pokemon cards, but not quite exactly for the same reasons you guys might think of. It was not for the money, it was definitely not for a particular card. I did it specifically because of childhood nostalgia. Growing up in Tokyo with my family, I literally saw Pokemon grow from the very beginning to the way it is today. The global, global phenomenon of what we see today is the reason why I just love Pokemon. Now granted, I don't have many Pokemon merches. Uh, simply, I just play the game. I've got the console version. I've got the Game Boy versions. Whatever versions we've got of playing wise. But Pokemon cards wasn't a big thing for me per se. I was involved with other cards such as Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Digimon cards. And you know, with, with that said, I tell myself I will do a bit of childhood nostalgia by simply buying packets. Booster packs, if you will. And so being an adult, a full-fledged adult in society, I had some spending power and this is where the problem arises. So here's my problem. I spent over $1,200, $1,300 worth of Pokemon cards in just a span of two months. It might not be a lot to some of you, it might be a whole lot more to others and to me it felt quite a bit of an impact. Nevertheless, I am proud to say I'm almost finished with this hobby, a very short-lived hobby for the reason because I had a selected goal in mind. I had this image of what cards I wanted to collect and kind of like put them into a nice frame like um, display and then, you know, just to proudly present it and add it into the collection of I am Otakuness as you guys could possibly imagine. But with that said, let's cut to the chase. Let's flip it around and show you guys my workstation. So let's go. That's right, there's no fooling anyone here. It's clearly the back of my room. It's a separate table which you guys are familiar with. And this is where I have my workstation cut out for me for the Pokemon cards I've spent. As well as the ones I've neatly framed here for me to display to you guys. As well as some Pokemon cards I'm trying to get rid of and selling it off on eBay just to subsidize the loss if you will. So let me just go straight through it, yeah? So right from the very beginning, guys, I've got the cards all neatly framed up. I will go through them step by step at one point. But I do want to explain this monstrous box of booster boxes. Uh, they weren't cheap to begin with. I particularly just want the Japanese cards, yeah? So with that said, each one of these boxes would roughly be in the price range of like just the white ones and the red ones, yeah. These ones were around 60, 60 US dollars each. So there's quite a couple of them there as well. Then on the top there, this is the shiny Vs. This was the ones you would see on my thumbnail that I had in regards to a previous video. Well, shiny Vs are like basically the English versions of shiny um, fates. And these were the cards that everyone was striving for simply because they wanted, let's say a shiny Charizard or maybe perhaps a shining money. So I didn't, I wasn't lucky, so I didn't get them, but it was a heavily hefty loss of about close to 90 US dollars. So with that total, that's the damage you see right there. That alone, this box of cards is possibly where the $1,000 stays. Well, I think around 1,000 ish. Right, now let's just go straight to the frames here. So sorry for the glare guys. I would see if I can remove the glare in a way. I'll turn off the lights here and then we'll go with it. Yeah, there we go. That's a lot better. So from top to bottom, guys, I'm sure you guys are familiar with some of the cards. If not, let me just go through the price and the damage and how I acquired them. I think everyone's all particularly looking at that Charizard card. So let's just get straight to it. 
there you have it. I have a shining Charizard from not Shining Fates, but the Japanese alternative shiny V-Star. Nope, I wasn't lucky. I didn't get it um, from a booster pack. I literally bought it from eBay. Yep, I succumbed to the eBay temptation, but I won it through an auction. So instead of the price uh, per norm, I believe like people are paying around to what, 250 to 300, 350 US dollars. I got it at a nice price of just 150 US dollars. It's still high, but you know what? Char Charizard is a must have for every Pokemon Avid collector. So there you have it. Uh, apologies for the glare once again, but here you go. Shining V-Star, Lizardon, and I'm very proud to have it in my collection. Moving on next, I've got Buswool again from eBay. This is relatively cheap. Like if this is 150 US dollars, I am Mutaku. How much could this card be? Well, granted, this card was just 12, 12 US dollars. See the difference in just popularity? I think market rates and scalpers are such a scary thing. But here you go, Buswool in all its glory. Gotta, gotta appreciate the muscular swollness of Buswool. So I got that. Moving on next, I've got Eternatus. This is a gold card, so it's relatively rare. You can get this card again from the same booster box of Charizard. This will be for the shiny V-Star. So shiny star V. And so Eternatus V, gold card. I got it for 20 US dollars. Again, I feel sometimes, am I spending money the right way? And then I just buy more cards. So let's not even question it. <laughs> so this is it on Zola's nice glory. Moving on next. We've got a Shifu in alternative secret full art. And this is not exactly the one everybody wants. If you could get the full max um, a Shifu one strike V max, that's close to about 100 US dollars. I, I luckily drew this with my brother from a booster box from one of these lucky booster boxes. So with that said, this is the Urshifu here at a price range of about 40 US dollars in value, but I didn't pay for that one this time around. Lucky me, lucky me. Let's move on to the next row. Next row here, I've got a rainbow. Uh, we call this hyper rare, hyper rare card because it's rainbow and it's, um, it glimmers in the light, obviously. Uh, so we got Lucario here and Mel Metal. So this again was a lucky draw from my brother and myself from this booster box at the very bottom called Full Metal. And so the Full Metal wall is how I got this hyper rare. Now it looks expensive, but it's not guys. It's, it's practically 10 US dollars. So then you'll be questioning like, I am Otaku. Was that a worth investment? In nostalgia sake wise, yes. In great positiveness, yes. In money wise, I hell no. So haha, <laughs> 10 US dollars worth. But nonetheless, pretty to look at and I'm proud to keep it there. Next up, Mel Metal. I got this off a local marketplace just for the price around 7 US dollars. But Mel Metal is definitely my bay. Looking at Mel looking at Mel Metal in the distance behind Baby Hulk. Yeah, in case you guys didn't realize, I have Baby Hulk here. Yep, this is Baby Hulk. And next to Baby Hulk is Mel Metal. So Mel Metal is like sort of the guardian. I'm going to put it back now. Right, let's keep on moving real quickly. After Mel Metal, we've got um, Solgaleo and Lunara. So this is with in collaboration with, I believe it's... Um, what's her name in Japanese is Lily. Is it, it is the same? Is it Lily? In, in English as well, I'm not certain. But this one, I drew it. So I drew this card back in Japan at the Pokemon Center in Tokyo. Um, in the, what, in the Pokemon Center in 2019. And I had no idea, guys, that this card even had value. It's It was left collecting dust in one of those booster boxes in the corner of my shelves there, collecting dust and rotting. And I had no idea that that card alone was about 50 US dollars. So lucky me guys, huh? Yeah, so that's it, 50 US dollars. Now this is a very nice one. This is Clefairy or Japanese is Pippi next to Lily again. And this is a promotion card. You don't buy this, you get this for free if you're at Pokemon Center on the day of a certain booster box release. Coincidentally, it was literally my last day of the trip in 2019. I got it at Clefairy for free, just simply because I bought a booster box two years ago. And fortunately, I just found out online that this is roughly 100 US dollars. It's a promo card, guys. Like what? It's also rotting away in the dust with this card. 
but it's worth something. But to me, not for the money wise, but just because of the way it looks and the way it feels, I feel like it's worthy of this frame. Just moving on down, this was my recent acquisitions. Every one of these cards in a row, first, uh, this fourth row here, sorry, this third row, this third row here is all acquired through the boxes that my boss, my brother and I acquired. It's called Matchless Fighters. And under that, we got a few recognizable characters. I believe we got Blaziken. Now, this isn't a very high tier Blaziken card, unfortunately, but it's so colorful and I love the contrast of the rainbow-like ambience. So I decided to keep it there. It's going to go for roughly 20 US dollars. Kurara, however, this is a trainer that you can only battle with if you did the sword and shield expansion of the game console and nintendo switch and so you can fight this trainer and this trainer kurara is going for about 45 us dollars so this was a great pull a great pull for me and my brother moving on up is articuno but it's an alternative version this is the galala form articuno v and this again isn't the highest tier articuno you could pull from the box Said unfortunately, but nevertheless, it looks nice. It, it deserves to be here, so I'm going to leave it there as well. Last one but not least, we've got Karen here. Um, Karen is one of the gym leaders that you guys may or may not be familiar with, and you can pull it from the same box set. And it's not worth a lot, guys. It's about, I don't know, 15 US dollars. So you kind of realize this tier alone, maybe not so much, but I think in value wise, not monetary, but feelings wise it deserves to remain there all right last row last row here we go we've got pikachu with ash now this card was pulled in 2019 um i'm not sure if it's worth much i think it's just 30 us dollars but the feeling of just having ash ketchum and pikachu on the very first meetup well their first encounter really this is deserving of why it should be there and the last three rows here we've got what seems to be a gold tier like card and it says that Kyodaina Kamado I'm thinking in English it would be what is it a massive fire what do you call that again fire stove yeah fire stove yeah we're gonna leave it as that yeah that massive mass, uh, massive fire stove that was pulled by my brother it's a gold tier card not exactly the same gold tier like Eternatus here but nice nonetheless last two cards guys I pulled Marnie's older brother. I don't know his name in English, guys. I hope I'm not butchering it to you all. But his name is Nezu in Japanese. And this is the young version of Nezu. Uh, I thought it looks pretty cool. And it's quite contra um, contrary to what he looks like now as a very emo-like rock band singer. He looks very humble. He looks very calm. He looks really like kind-hearted. And I think that's why I decided to keep it there. Sort of the feel of Blast from the Past. Last but not least, guys, we've got Mimikyu, the imitation Pokemon that looks exactly like Pikachu or what it strives to be because it was lonely and he needed friends. Sort of like myself. Cough, cough. <laughs> right, so this is my first frame of cards and I was convincing myself and pretty certain that I would not continue after this. So with that said, I may or may not open more boxes, but in time, I decided that it's... I feel figures are still more relatively more value. Same with statues as well. So we'll, st we'll, we'll leave it as that. And you guys can see at the bottom here, this is my workstation. So I've got a few more cards I just received uh, recently from eBay. Uh, this is Gachom and Giratina. And these cards were about just 12 US dollars. Hyper rare, that's why it's rainbow. Yeah, it, it deserves to be there. But nonetheless, I think I've already decided what it should be there. And this could be perhaps for another frame. And I've also got a surfing Pikachu. Serves up y'all. Pikachu. This is a promo card once again. Received from Pokemon Center Tokyo. And it's going for about 25 US dollars. But I never see this hobby as a monetary thing. So truth be told, I will keep it as it is. And be proudly keeping these cards. Well, for all of eternity, I guess. Right guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that little snippet of my short-lived Pokemon card hobby. I don't know if you guys would say, I am Taku, stop right now, save yourself the trouble, save yourself the money and time. Or maybe some of you are encouraging me to say, I am Taku, go all the way, spend more of your dough, go crazy. But nonetheless, I think I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the snippet of that lifestyle. Let's look forward to more figure statues that's upcoming. I fortunately finally heard news of a statue of none other than Kaido from One Piece. And it's supposed to be a massive statue, guys. So, truth be told, I am so excited 
that I'm literally gonna go gym right after this video so that I can exercise all that hype so that the energy converts into more positive plus ultra. Right guys, with that said, it's been a pleasure. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment as per norm as what normal people used to say. I'll see you guys in the next video. This has been I Am Otaku plus Ultra.